this first question, I can tell it's already going to be hard for you. <laughs> what is the best thing about your child? <laughs> the best thing about my child would be um, her ability just to live life to the fullest and be in the moment and just take it for exactly what it is and enjoy it. Kind of the whole dance like nobody's watching. Uh, she just, she does. I love it. I would say one of the best things about my child, Nicholas, is his sense of humor and his willingness to help and just an all-around great kid, willing to learn, and it's taken many years, but he's learning to adapt. I'm getting secret messages from mine. <laughs> um, so I have to be careful. Um, I think the one, there are so many great things about mine, of course, just like there are the other two. But um, I think probably one of the best things is definitely a sense of humor and um, a willingness to be open-minded even when it's difficult um, for him to do that. And so that's huge. All right. Can you briefly tell us about the story of how your child was diagnosed? Briefly? <laughs> <laughs> time we got. <laughs> Here you go, get started. One minute. <laughs> um, the short version. The short version. Well, I have two older children, and with Nicholas, just things were different. Um, when he started preschool, things were challenging, and you just kind of chalk it up to being three years old. And then once he got to kindergarten, things got a little bit more difficult, and his father's job had moved us around from state to state. So at the time we were living in Kentucky and it was a very difficult experience getting him diagnosed because insurance didn't cover anything. So it was either you pay out of pocket or you do it on your own. I was blessed enough that I had a brother that was working for an organization in Wisconsin. So we drove eight hours from Kentucky to Wisconsin for him to be tested multiple times um, back and forth. And that's when he got the diagnosis was just, you know, the little things. Like in kindergarten, you know, they were learning to draw circles. And if his circle wasn't right, he would erase it until there were holes in the paper. And the teachers just couldn't get him to get past that hump. And I mean, I could talk all day about it, but we got him diagnosed and we came back to Kentucky and the schools there didn't want to accept the diagnosis because it was in another state. So that was very challenging in itself. Um, we moved to Virginia after that and they were a little bit more open and that's when we finally started getting more services and then when we finally came to North Carolina, I believe he was in, what, third, fourth grade? I remember it was like kindergarten. Yeah, that's when we got into more of the services and and that, but basically got diagnosed in kindergarten, first grade, through a lot of research and a lot of blessed family members that helped us. Um, so ours was uh, very early on. Uh, we've always lived in North Carolina, and when, um, you know, we, Michaela has an older brother, five years older, and so similar to your situation, she wasn't hitting certain milestones at the same rate. Um, she was 16 months or so before she walked for the first time and at 18 months if you're not aware by about 18 months uh, children should be saying um, you know kind of two, you know have multiple words in their vocabulary working towards kind of two word sentences and when we took her for her 18 month appointment she was not doing that and um, by the time so her pediatrician actually started us through the evaluation process at 18 months old by the time she was 24 months old, we were doing uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and, um, and in-home services that continued until she started school, and she went to a three-year-old pre-K, a four-year-old pre-K, and then started kindergarten. Um, and then, uh, so ours was very early on. Uh, we knew that we were going to... Um, uh, you know, be providing supports and helping her achieve what she needed to achieve. So. so our story is a little bit different because um, Jaden was my first child and I had no idea what I was doing as a parent. 
And so I uh, did not recognize, uh, and I didn't know much about autism at all, so I didn't recognize uh, any of the things that I was seeing as uh, potentially being autism. Uh, I thought I had a really, really, really advanced smart kid because he started talking early and he, um, he, he didn't walk though, much like um, the others mentioned, he, he walked late and uh, anyway, first indicators that I had that it wasn't just that I had a really, you know, genius, genius on my hand was uh, sensory challenges, a lot of sensory issues uh, that we had to work through. And then when he started school, I laughed about the circle story uh, because Jaden got a note home almost every day because he would only color in red no matter what, and he would cover the entire page in red, and we would get a note home from the teacher, please tell him to quit using red, and uh, please take his red crayon away from him. <laughs> And so, um, and then it just kind of grew from there that we realized that there were some things that were just different from other kids. And um, Jaden, uh, because he performed so well and did so well in general, uh, it was very difficult to get a diagnosis of autism. They wanted to say it was ADHD and then it was anxiety and it was all these other things instead. Uh, and then when we finally got someone to listen to us that there was more to it than that. And in fact, he, he really didn't have the typical ADHD characteristics at all um, we finally got someone to hear us out and test him for that and I paid a lot of money for it because Pitt County Schools didn't want to help out with that and uh, and we went from there and then the next step was trying to get an IEP and trying to get some help that way and that was also very difficult that's a whole different story that we didn't ask so okay thanks for the TED talk um, <laughs> Okay, when he or she was diagnosed, how much of an autism pro would you estimate you were? So my answer's quick because I knew very little um, at all. And I had been a teacher for several years and I still knew very little about it. I really would say at 0%, um, but I'm a fast learner and I was very lucky I had a aunt that was an OT, I had a cousin that was an autism special ed teacher who specialized in Asperger's, which was, at the time was Nick's diagnosis. So I learned real quick. Um, and you just read, 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 YouTube, <laughs> all sorts of good stuff. Um, so our diagnosis uh, started a little differently. Um, it was actually apraxia, which is a different neuromotor uh, uh, disability that affects speech and then um, developmental delays. And so the autism came later. Uh, so I, I, what I knew, I knew because I was a high school math teacher at the time and I was in year six and I had taught several students up to that point, but only at the high school level and likely uh, at the time the diagnosis was more of an Asperger's. Um, and so um, I definitely did not know anything about raising a young child, um, but more so what to do if you're the teacher in a high school classroom. So love the fact that there were lots of resources through, I was then in Craven County, uh, North Carolina, and then relying on my special educators that I worked with and other folks uh, in the district. So quick learner. Okay, let's talk about some of the issues that your child deals with regularly and how do you help your child handle these challenges? <laughs> um, I would say, uh, oh gosh, a difficulty. Um, the dealing with the strength that I mentioned for Michaela with the way that she just kind of lives life, no holds barred and, and, and captures whatever that moment is. Um, sometimes that creates some difficulties because the space that she might be in is not necessarily as accepting or um, accommodating or set up to kind of to deal with that. Uh, school structures definitely are not always um, uh, as understanding or as accepting or open um, when you know you're trying to maintain a classroom full of 30 plus kids I get it uh, so helping her to not change who she is or or, or squelch her enthusiasm but also uh, helping her navigate those situations so that uh, she's continuing to make the progress that she wants to make and that would just sum up of a lot of little things into one big category um, I'd 
say probably the biggest challenge or difficulty has been flexibility. It's much better now. He's come a long way, but it, when he was younger, it was very much black and white. There's no gray. There's no seeing somebody else's point of view. It was just my way or the highway. Um, but he's learned a lot, and helping him just through a lot of talk, a lot of friends, family, you know, teachers. I don't know where I'd be without Miss Maine or Miss Cole, because without uh, friends and family helping, it's very difficult, mm -hmm. you know, for any teenager or any child. Um, so just a lot of help and resources, reading, learning, the more you learn, and adapting yourself. You have to be flexible, too. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Um, <clears throat> with Jaden, uh, I think probably the biggest challenge has been the just what he said he saw as one of his weaknesses, communication, uh, getting him to be able to communicate his needs and his um, preferences or whatever with others. But I think for me, the bigger challenge with having a kid with autism has been everyone else, not Jaden or whatever. It's been what society's perception is of what autism is and what it should be. And um, I think the thing that frustrated me the most as a parent uh, was how everybody else seems to have an opinion without knowing an awful lot about it. And everybody else wants to offer their advice without knowing a whole lot about it. And I got really frustrated uh, when he was in school with uh, people that did not know but would love to tell me what he just needs. Got real tired of hearing what he just needs because it was often he just needs more structure. He just needs to get organized. He just needs, right, to, you, he just needs a good whooping. We've heard that one a time or two. He just needs more time with his dad. He just needs this, just, I mean, we heard it all the time. And I got so tired of it because, I mean, if, if don't you think if I lived with him, if it was a matter of what he just needed, that I probably would have figured some of that out. Uh, and so the judgment that comes from the lack of understanding and the lack of awareness has been the bigger challenge for me than anything that Jaden threw at me. Can I change my answer? <laughs> All right, speaking of what you were saying, Mom, uh, what do you want other people to know about autism in your child? I'll start again just because I'm here. Um, <laughs> what, okay, I would like for other people to know that um, people with autism are just like everybody else. I think I heard Nick say something to that effect, um, that they have the same desires, the same wants, the same needs uh, that everybody else does. Um, and so I wish people understood that and that um, they're doing the best that they can in the space that they're in at that time, just like every other human being. Everybody's doing the best they can in the space they're in at that time. And so I want uh, people to understand that and about, uh, about people with autism and Jaden in particular. Um, I'd say a lot of the same, um, just because you know one person with autism doesn't mean you know my child with autism. Everybody's different, just like you know this kid over here doesn't mean you know what that kid over there is. The, they're the same as everybody. Um, and I think with not just with people with autism, but people in general, we need to realize there's more sides to one story and just Everybody needs to learn to adapt both ways. Um, what I would kind of want other folks to know is that um, I'm probably going to pull a Kevin. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I said I'm probably going to pull a Kevin. <laughs> but, um, the little things that we take so for granted. Um, feeling comfortable in your own skin. I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to. Um, feeling comfortable in your own skin, feeling uh, safe and at ease in your environment. I don't know that that's anything that um, comes natural or just that we kind of take for granted that, you know, you come into a room and you're around other people or um, you're in a new space. It, I would liken it to 
you know, I and see in Michaela that I don't know if she almost sometimes just feels like everything's like inside out. I mean, everything is um, more controlled chaos now um, because she's learned a lot of ways to cope and deal with things. But um, it's it is a constant. I don't like the word battle or struggle, but like literally, it takes so much energy to be exactly who they are, who she is in that moment. And it is physically, emotionally exhausting. Um, and um, I think it's just, it's hard to kind of put ourselves in that position sometimes because it doesn't take out of us, it doesn't take out of me, um, you know, what it takes out of her. And uh, she's grown so much in that area, and being part of Boneyard has really helped with that, and, and taking her out of her comfort zone, and her taking um, social emotional risks, but, um, you know, it is, it's, it takes every ounce of everything she has every day. All right. <laughs> This is a good one. All right, what brought you and your child to robotics? Uh, Paula Maine. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, Michaela's enthusiasm. I mean, she said Nick, and it was. It was coming home and, and hearing about the meeting, and, you know, uh, Nick said this, and Nick said that, and, and uh, you know, Miss Maine, and, and so uh, she wanted to go, and... Um, didn't know how it was going to work, and we went, and we're still here, and as long as they let us, we will still be. Uh, Miss Maine brought us to robotics. <laughs> <laughs> um, he started high school, and she was his teacher, and, you know, Nick, getting to that age, you want to be part of stuff, you know, sports is not our forte, so robotics was perfect. Um, went to the information meeting and said, okay, we can give this a try. And, and it was a growing experience for me, I think more than even for him. Um, learning to let go, learning to let him grow up <laughs> and, and uh, let him go to a meeting by himself. I think it took me a year, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, without Miss Maine, um, we probably wouldn't have even realized what robotics is, and it's been a bigger blessing than I can even put in words. Aww. <laughs> um, I got into it. Actually, Jaden said that he got into it because I knew about it, but really it's the other way around. Um, Jaden learned about it a little bit in middle school when he did the robot sumo that the Pirates put on. And he had such a great time doing that, that uh, when he got ready to, get, to move out of middle school, he said, he told me he was still, he was interested in pursuing that and finding out about robotics. And um, so I pushed really hard to get him to go there and to get on the team. At that time, I knew very, very little about it, knew very little about how it works, knew very little about what to expect, probably drove Kevin crazy. Um, because I was probably one of those moms and because um, I really wanted them to be on the team because that's what he wanted. And um, I, too, was unable to leave him on his own, couldn't stand the thought of doing that, so I figured if I'm going to be there anyway, I may as well start helping out and slowly kind of got involved with helping out. And then uh, here I am now, um, more involved than I ever thought I would be four years ago or five years ago. Um, and I was going to say something else, and there it went. Oh, well. <laughs> well, you were the one that integrated neurodiversity into the team. Yes. Is that what you were going to say? Oh. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Fun, yeah, thanks for trying. All right. <laughs> Are you done then? I, I am. All right. It's going to come to me in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. What changes have you noticed in your child since they have been a part of robotics? Um. That's actually, um, okay, that's actually reminded me kind of, and that's, that's part of it. Um, 
Jaden's first year, I'm gonna make it quick. Jaden's first year, uh, I did kind of back off after I after he was chosen to be on the team, and I knew realized I was probably driving Kevin crazy. I did back off a little bit and tried tried to stay in the showers with the marketing team a little bit more and let him kind of go back there in the where the engineers were and do his own thing. And at the end of the season, uh, his first season, one of the other people that was mentoring came to me and talked about how. Um, Ashley found me at one of the competitions and said, um, are you Jaden's mom? I'm like, yeah, good, good that you didn't know that because that means I hid pretty well for this whole thing. But anyway, he said, um, so I hear he wants to be an engineer and go to state because at that time Jaden was thinking about going to state. And I said, yeah. And I'm like, what are you about to tell me? And he said, he is going to rock it. You have no idea. He is going to be so amazing at what he does. And I was standing in the stands and I went, wait, wait, wait. My, my, my kid, you sure? I mean, because he has not talked to anybody. He would not speak to anyone. And, um, and so just being a part of the team has changed him from being that withdrawn person that I had to kind of stay on top of and, um, and couldn't leave alone to being uh, kind of a leader. He went from, and literally a leader, he went from uh, being a member on the engineering team to being the lead engineer and then went from that to being the lead driver, which I never would have thought was gonna happen, but he did that, and um, has been, I think, a pretty good leader the last couple of years in several areas. Uh, how has robotics changed my child? Um, probably too much that I can put into words. One kind of quick story was um, my parents came down for one of the first meets that we had the first year. Nick got asked to be the mascot, so he got to go out and you know, kind of be out there a little bit more. And at the end of the competition, my mom turned to me in tears and said he's found his tribe. <laughs> it was friendship that he hadn't had, a group of people that accepted him, parents that accepted me, <laughs> And my, you know, little tendencies of hovering, um, not wanting to let go. Um, it's opened up a world I couldn't imagine for my son. You always want the best for your kids, no matter what. Um, yeah, you gotta be going here, girl. <laughs> it has just opened up a world I couldn't have imagined. Um, friendship, him being out more going. Um, I never imagined when he first started high school before robotics, him going for a weekend trip without me with a group of friends or being asked to go to Dungeons and Dragons in town, hanging out with friends, you know, hey mom, can I have the car? <laughs> Was never in my thoughts and um, thanks to robotics and this amazing group of people he has a world in front of him and he's learning to go for it I don't know that there's much more that I can add to that um, except that um, uh, it's motivated um, I don't know about, you know, your experiences, but, you know, um, the amount of time that it kind of takes to kind of recuperate from all the energy that it, it need that, you know, Michaela kind of needs to be on when, you know, she's at school or she, she's at, you know, um, around other people, even if it's family or small groups. A lot of the other times then the, the, the downtime that is needed, that's, you know, in your room or in a quiet space or things like that to kind of get back to, um, uh, yourself, I guess, is the way I would phrase it. Um, robotics changed that for her, that some of her, um, you know, recharging or motivation is Wednesday nights being here with the team, um, competitions coming up, and um, she actually, you know, in some ways plans and just reframes things that this is what I want to do because I, of robotics, and so it's just changed the way she motivates herself and um, drives herself and and plans and um, you know the fact that it it changed from her wanting alone time to wanting to be around other people and to tell them 
uh, things. Um, I think that the the young adults said you know earlier that it's not that we don't have emotions. Uh, sometimes it's how we you know express them that might be a little differently. And you know uh, Paula was there when this happened. Um, Michaela doesn't hug a lot of people. Uh, tactile, uh, uh, you know, aversion is one of the, the, the biggest things that we saw. She was a wonderful baby because she just wanted to lay in her crib and go to sleep by herself. You didn't have to rock her at all. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, as she got older, you know, tactile, um, you know, aversion was one of her, uh, you know, uh, triggers uh, when, you know, with, with autism. And I didn't happen to be at this competition. Uh, unfortunately, again, going back to the, I've, Michaela has never stayed with an adult that is non-family other than the adults in this room. And she's almost, she's going on 18 years of age. But at this particular competition, uh, Woody Flowers, who unfortunately we lost this past week, uh, visited one of the North Carolina competitions. And so my mom had gone to the competition and I get a video of Michaela almost tackling Woody Flowers when she saw him and she ran up to him and she throws her arms around him and just is like, you know, she's so excited and she's overflowing with emotion and she literally ran up and, and hugged this person. And for that to kind of evoke that kind of emotion and for her to have that, those are the kinds of changes I've seen in her participation through robotics. So, thank you. What advice would you give new students trying out for the team or advice for new parents of students and not just parents with autistic or neurodiverse students? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I got the mic. Um, so, my first year uh, as a parent. Michaela, this is her third year, so she was a sophomore when she joined. And so if you are a new parent, what I would um, say is to don't hesitate as a parent to approach other parents um, and, you know, ask questions or to just strike up conversations or, um, you know, that type of thing. Uh, I, I think that I like to think that we are a welcoming bunch, uh, but I know that like sometimes I can get caught up in whatever I need to be doing on Wednesday versus necessarily you know talking with other parents. So just if you you have something that you are wondering or thinking about as a parent, just grab one of us. We're happy to to talk or to share. Um, I know that's what I felt the first year, um, and as a student. Uh, yeah, I would say the same thing with your peers. Uh, just when things pop up that you think about, don't hesitate to ask because, you know, I, I think that it's not just a saying, I see it lived out constantly, is that everybody's welcome in the boneyard and um, they live it out. So whatever we can do, let us know. Um, <clears throat> to the new students, I'd say relax, enjoy. Um, these are gonna be some of the best memories of your life, so absorb it, cherish it. And the same with parents. Um, it's going to be the stuff, some of the best times you'll have watching your child enjoy it, growing, changing, maturing. Relax. These people got your kid covered. <laughs> yeah. No matter what fear you have, they got your back. Um, on that note, <laughs> I'm coming from a, a little bit of a double perspective, being one of the leaders as well, but um, be patient with the leaders. <laughs> We're still growing with all of this too. Um, this is, when, when I first approached Kevin, was, which was about doing more with neurodiversity and autism, was Jaden's first year. And um, he said something to the effect, you know, I've always liked to, would always like to get involved in something like that, but my wife would kill me if I start a whole new team based on that. And, um, and then he was just always really, really busy with, with growing Boneyard because it was a fairly new team of its own. Of its own. So um, be patient with us. We're still kind of growing this thing. We're still figuring out what works. We're still making a difference a little bit at a time. And um, we're going to mess up here and there. So to the parents and the students, that's a big one. Be patient with the leaders.
please. This one is a good one, so I just wanted to ask it. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, last one. How has First Robotics and Boneyard helped you as a parent? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, how has it made, helped me as a parent? I don't know. Um, hey. <laughs> um, it is a great question. It's lear I've learned to trust. Um, Without going into a lot of detail, I didn't have a good family life uh, at home. Um, and I didn't realize how bad it was till I got out in the world. <laughs> but robotics gave not only my son a chance to grow friendships, it gave me a chance too. Um, it's given him strength, it's given me strength. It's life changing. Um, there's so much I could say. I just can't find all the words right now. <laughs> um, there's yeah, there's so much I could say. Um, but I'd say the biggest thing is it's learned me to trust myself. It's learned me to trust my child. It's taught oh, learned me. Yeah, yeah, I'm not an English teacher, thank God. <laughs> it's taught me <laughs> to trust my child and have faith. You know. Um, and relax, and it's let me breathe for the first time in a long time. I could take a breath. I didn't have to do it on my own. All my extended family live in other states, so it was me and my kids. Um, I did it on my own. It gave me a chance to realize I don't have to do it all on my own. Um, so that's helped me as a parent to give Nick the room to grow that he needs and not um, have me uh, suffocate him. Like, I kind of feel like I was sometimes. Because <laughs> I was a little overprotective. <laughs> I don't know that I can really add much. Because, I, 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 like, literally, as you were, you know, getting ready to think um, and talk, I was like, trust. Yeah. So I, I think she captured it. Do you? Um, I don't really have a lot to add either. It's because that's exactly, that's a big part of what being a, uh, on the team and letting our kids be on the team it helps us build trust and, and not feel alone and like we have to do it on our own. I've always said that um, I felt like, and I'm not trying to embarrass my child, but I've always said I prayed for purpose and I got Jaden. I prayed for joy and I got Madeline. <laughs> and um, definitely feel like uh, Jaden is a big part of, and robotics is a big part of me kind of f feeling like I am fulfilling my purpose for being here. And so uh, it has changed me as a parent in that way. It's given me a little bit of a purpose and it's helping me grow as a, as a person and as a teacher and as an autism specialist now. And um, so it's definitely had a big impact on all of that. Yay. All right, give it up for our parents. <laughs>